John Fitzgerald Kennedy was born in Brooklyn, Massachusetts on May 9, 1917. Both the Fitzgerald and the Kennedys were wealthy and influential Irish Catholic Boston families. Paternal grandfather Kennedy, P.J. Kennedy, was a wealthy banker and liquor merchant, and his maternal grandfather, John E. Fitzgerald, nicknamed Honey Fitz, was an accomplished politician who served as congressman and mayor of Boston. Kennedy's mother, Rose Elizabeth Fitzgerald, was a Boston debutante, and his father, Joseph Kennedy Sr., a wealthy banker who made a fortune in the stock market after World War I. Joe Kennedy Sr. went on to a public service career as chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission and as ambassador to Great Britain. John, nicknamed Jack, was the second oldest of nine exceptional siblings. His siblings include an older brother, Joe, four sisters, Rosemary, Kathleen, Eunice, and Patricia, and three younger brothers, Robert, Jean, and Teddy. Joseph and Rose largely shunned the world of socialites in Boston into which they were born to concentrate instead on educating their children. Joe Sr. in particular was fascinated with every detail of his children's lives and had high hopes for them. He worked to instill a fierce competitive fire in them and the belief that winning was everything. He entered his kids in swimming and sailing events and chided them for finishing first place. Despite frequent reprimands from his father, Young Kennedy was a poor student and a naughty child. John schooled at Catholic Boys Boarding School in Connecticut called Canterbury, where he excelled in English and history, the subjects he enjoyed, but nearly failed Latin, in which he had no interest. Kennedy managed to go on to Childs, a prestigious preparatory school in Connecticut, despite his low grades. Even though he was brilliant, illustrated on the few occasions when he applied himself by the extraordinary thoughtfulness and depth of his research, Kennedy remained, at best, an average student, preferring sports, girls, and practical jokes to coursework. John graduated from Childs and entered Harvard in 1936, where Joe was a fellow. John played football as did his brother Joe. Though he was not as good athlete as Joe, he was determined and persevered. Unfortunately, John ruptured a disc in his spine one day while playing and never really recovered from the incident. His back kept hurting him for the remainder of his life. The two eldest boys were both handsome, sweet and smart young men and Mr. Kennedy had high expectations for them both. However, it was Joe who had declared to everyone that he would be the first Catholic to become president when he was a young boy. But John, on the other hand, seemed a little less ambitious. He was interested in students' groups and sports and worked hard in his history and government classes, though his grades remained mediocre. Mr. Kennedy was appointed United States Ambassador to England late 1937 and moved there with his entire family, except for Joe and John, who were at Harvard. John became quite involved in European politics and international affairs because of his father's work. He returned to Harvard more eager to learn about history, government, and current affairs after a summer visit to England and other European countries. Joe and John regularly received letters from their father in England who kept them abreast with the latest news about the wars and tensions that everybody feared would soon explode into a full-scale war. He also mentioned Germany and Italy's intent to take lands from other countries because they had strong armies. Germany, under the leadership of Adolf Hitler, invaded Poland and began World War II on September 1, 1939. At that time, John was a senior at Harvard and decided to write his thesis on why Britain was ill-prepared for war with Germany. It was subsequently published as a book entitled Why England Slept, selling over 80,000 copies. Jack received his Harvard degree in June 1940. Joe and Jack both joined the Navy shortly after graduation. Joe was a flyer sent to Europe while Jack was made lieutenant and assigned commander of a patrol torpedo boat, the PT-109, to the South Pacific region. On August 2nd, 1943, his boat, PT-109, was rammed by a Japanese warship and split in two. Two sailors died and Kennedy severely injured his back. Hauling another wounded sailor by the strap of his life vest, Kennedy led the survivors to a nearby island where they were rescued six days later. The incident earned him the Navy and Marine Corps Medal for extremely heroic conduct and a purple heart for the injuries he suffered. John's brother, Joe, was not so lucky. He died a year later when his plane blew up during a dangerous mission in Europe. In the aftermath of his death, John took on the responsibility of achieving his family hopes and aspirations forsaking his dreams of becoming a teacher or a writer. 
His father convinced him to run for Congress in the 11th Congressional District in Massachusetts, where he won in 194. It was the start of Jack's political career. As the years progressed, John F. Kennedy, a Democrat, served in the House of Representatives for three terms, six years. Kennedy challenged Republican incumbent Henry Cabot Lodge for a seat in the U.S. Senate in 1952. Backed by his father's immense financial resources, he even hired his younger brother Robert as his campaign manager. Nonetheless, Kennedy secured a narrow victory in an election year Republicans took control of both houses of Congress, giving him tremendous influence within the Democratic Party. Soon after being elected senator at age 36, John F. Kennedy married Jacqueline Bova, a 24-year-old writer with the Washington Times Herald. John and Jackie had three children, Caroline, Patrick Kennedy, John Jr. Unfortunately, Senator Kennedy's back started hurting again early on in their marriage and he had two serious operations. As he recovered from surgery, he wrote a book about several US senators who had jeopardized their lives fighting for the values they believed in. In 1957, the book called Profiles in Courage won the Pulitzer Prize for biography. After nearly winning his party's nomination for vice president under Adlai Stevenson in 1956, Kennedy declared his intention to run for the presidency on January 2, 1960. He beat Hubert Humphrey in the primaries and chose Lyndon Johnson of Texas, the Senate majority leader, as his running mate. In the presidential election, Kennedy faced a tough fight against his Republican rival, Richard Nixon, a two-term vice president. Kennedy bested Nixon in the first television debates watched by millions of audiences and won the presidential race in November, becoming the youngest individual and the first Roman Catholic to be elected president. President Kennedy's young family lent the White House a distinctive air of youth and glamour. In his inaugural speech, given on January 20, 1961, the new president called on his fellow Americans to work together to pursue progress and eradicate poverty but also to win the ongoing Cold War against communism around the world. A new crisis in the field of foreign relations emerged in April 1961, when Kennedy accepted the proposal to send 1,400 CIA-trained Cuban exiles to an amphibious landing at Cuban's Bay of Pigs. The mission ended in disaster, with almost all exiled, captured or killed. During the Cuban Missile Crisis in October 1962, Kennedy clashed with Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev. Kennedy declared a naval blockade of Cuba upon discovering that the Soviet Union was developing several nuclear and long-range missile bases in Cuba that might pose a danger to the continental United States. Kennedy secured his most significant win in foreign affairs in July 1963 when Khrushchev agreed to join him and British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan in signing a nuclear test ban treaty. Nevertheless, Kennedy's willingness to curtail the rise of communism in Southeast Asia prompted him to intensify U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. Even as he shared his dismay about the situation, President Kennedy founded the Peace Corps in his first year of office. Via this initiative, which continues today, Americans can volunteer to work anywhere help was needed around the world. John Kennedy was also keen on the U.S. leading the way in space exploration, Though the Soviet Union was ahead of the U.S. in the space program, President Kennedy was eager to catch up. Kennedy became the first president to ask Congress to sanction over $22 billion for Project Apollo to be the first to send a man to the moon by the end of the decade. The president had to contend with some critical issues in the USA, the biggest problems of all being racial prejudice. In 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that discrimination would no longer be permitted in public schools. However, Several schools failed to follow this law, particularly in southern states. Racial segregation continued on buses, in restaurants, movie theaters, and other public places. Thousands of American people of all races and cultures joined together to protest this discrimination peacefully. Martin Luther King Jr. was one of the well-known founders of the civil rights movement, who didn't believe that President Kennedy was supportive of their efforts. Nevertheless, on June 11, 1963, the president proposed to Congress a revised civil rights bill and he went on television urging Americans to stop racism. On November 21, 1963, President Kennedy flew to Texas to make some political speeches. The next day, when his vehicle was slowly driving through cheering crowds in Dallas, shots rang out. Kennedy suffered fatal injuries and died shortly after. Police captured Lee Harvey Oswald, 
within hours of the shooting and charged him with the murder. Another man, Jack Ruby, shot and killed Oswald on November 24th, thereby silencing the only person who could have given further details on the horrendous incident. The death of President Kennedy caused immense sorrow and grief to all Americans. Most people still remember exactly where they were and what they were doing when they received the news. Hundreds of thousands of people gathered for the president's funeral in Washington and millions around the world watched it on television. As the years have gone by and other presidents have written their chapters in history, John Kennedy's brief tenure as president stands out for his leadership, personality and accomplishments in people's memories. Many admire his coolness when dealing with hard decisions. Others admire his capacity to inspire people with his eloquent speeches. Still, others think most significant was his empathy and determination to advocate for new government initiatives to support the poor, the disabled, and the sick. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll appreciate if you subscribe to our channel and share the videos with your friends. We love you.